G'day, Chris Whelan here from the Wellington Centre of Business Excellence, Building Better Businesses. I want to talk to you about a piece of research we've done recently, and it's about what are the four or five key things that really hinder um, SME business owners from being successful, or if not being successful, then at least being as successful as they could be, and the things that actually keep them up at night. So in no particular order, the five things that we've come across that we've seen in our research, one is knowing the numbers, right? It's the financial and non-financial numbers of the business. So the things that really matter to you. Two, having clear direction, knowing where you're going. The old adage that if you don't know where you're going, anybody will do. Imagine driving from, you know, I, mean, I live in Wellington. Imagine driving from Wellington to Auckland, but you don't have no map, not quite sure where you're going to get to. You could end up anywhere, right? So one, knowing the numbers, the financial and the non-financial numbers. Two, having a very clear direction, a clear strategic direction. You know, a lot of people got into business and they, oh, they were very excited. They were amped, they were pumped. And now all they want to do is, can I please pay the bills this week? Can I please make wages every month? You know, so that isn't that isn't a strategic direction. That's a that's something that pulls people down. So that we've seen in our research, really a big issue for for particularly for SME business owners. Third area is marketing to and acquiring clients, growing the business, right? Marketing and marketing to and acquiring clients. Clearly, it's the it's the you know the game of, of everyone in business. We need to be doing that all the time. Fourth area, talent management, or what I call talent management. But really, that's about growing winning teams. How do SMEs do it? Because particularly over the last you know, 24, 36 months in New Zealand, we've had a real labor labor market crunch. So it's, and it's clear that isn't going away, even though the conditions are changing a bit. And then the, the fifth is operational efficiency. So how do they get really, really good at doing, the, doing the things consistently, about being efficient, about keeping costs down, about making sure that how they deliver their goods or services is always good, always efficient, always effective. So as a five five areas that we've seen are, are really impactful and really hem hampering a lot of uh, SME business owners at the moment. I want to talk to you today about the first of them, the financial and non-financial metrics, what I call KPIs, uh, KPIs and metrics. And uh, there's a few things I want to talk to you about um, over the next couple of weeks. We'll go through all five of those. It's part of, uh, I suppose, a teaching series, if you like, on, on the piece of research we've done for those five areas. But today, in particular, I want to talk to you about KPIs and metrics. Now, if you don't have them, imagine you don't have decent KPIs. Imagine you don't have decent metrics in your business. I think there are at least three really negative issues there. One, the three big problems, if you like. One is a lack of insight. You don't know what is going, excuse me, what's going on in your business. You don't know what the score is. Right? Business is the game, or, or the game that we're playing, and this, how we keep score is by the numbers, particularly at the end of the day, the profit number. If you don't have decent KPIs, you don't have metrics, you don't know how to keep score, you don't know how to have uh, decent insights. Therefore, you can't actually make adjustments. You can't improve your performance. So that's the first point. Second point is very poor decision-making. Decisions based on gut feel. Not always a bad thing, right? Not always a bad thing. But decisions make on gut feel and guesswork, that's a bad thing, rather than data-driven decision-making. So that's the second, uh, I think, very negative consequence of having either no dashboard or no KPIs or metrics or very poor ones. And then the third one is missed opportunities. We're all in business to grow. We're all in business as in any, any situation to grow, to get new clients, to serve our communities better, to add value. And if you aren't measuring stuff, you haven't got decent metrics, decent KPIs, that isn't going to happen. You're not going to be able to allocate resources properly. You're not going to be able to uh, decide, hang on, I should be in this part of the, the market rather than that part. And, and all of those are, are not good things. Conversely, with good KPIs, with good metrics, a few things happen. One, you massively increase your agility. What do I mean by that? Well, you have the ability to look at things and say, hey, market conditions are changing. We know that right now in New Zealand, we're potentially facing the big R word, the big recession. Right? If you've got good KPIs, you've got good metrics, not to say that you're going to sail through it smoothly, but you'll be able to have agility. You'll be able to look at things differently. You'll be able to measure, hang on, this is working, that's not working. What should I do differently? So that's the first point, agility. Second point is that you will be able to optimize your performance, right? Whether that's finance, whether that's your marketing, you've got the KPIs. You know that if you spend $100 on marketing, you're going to get $200 back or $1,000 back. What does that tell you? Well, hey, keep spending the money. Conversely, if you put out, and a lot of people I see doing this, they put out money on marketing. They don't know. They don't measure it. They don't have decent KPIs. They don't know if they've actually been successful or not. And they get fearful. They just see the money disappearing. So firstly, agility. Secondly, the ability to operate to optimize your performance. And then the third thing, and this is absolutely critical, because now you're making decisions based on 
solid evidence, you have confidence in the decision making. Not just you as the business owner, but your staff, your shareholders, if you've got shareholders, your suppliers, your own customers know, hang on, this person's making good decisions and the data, let's assume the data is available to your staff, they know you're making good decisions with good data. So increased confidence. Very different, right? So on the one hand, lack of insight. On the one hand, lack of performance optimization. Poor allocation of resources. On the other hand, good agility, good performance optimization, and massively important to increase confidence. So think about how you do that. There's three things that I want to, I guess, talk about in terms of teaching points, if you like, about why I believe so strongly in good KPIs and good metrics. Firstly, is the relevance and alignment. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a little bit like the canary in the mine shaft. When I work with business owners, I use what I call the five ways numbers. It starts with leads, conversion rates, so how many leads are they getting, how often are they converting them. Then it goes to the average dollar sale, which is how much are people spending, how many times they're spending it. And of course, the margin, which leads to profit. If you get those five things right and you measure them, so it's a very clear set of numbers, you actually put yourself ahead of the game. You know, ahead, hang on, if my leads are coming down, that's the canary in the mind shaft. I need to do something about it. Well, how do I respond? Maybe I increase my marketing spend, right? So it's the canary in the mind shaft and it's clear numbers. It's clear KPIs. Give you a quick story. I mean, I'm working with someone at the moment where they've seen that over in one part of their business, Probably a year ago, they were getting 35 leads a day. That's now down to 25. In their case, that's fine. It's not a catastrophe. But it has told them the numbers are coming down. The market conditions are changing. So what we've done is we've increased our marketing spend. We've looked at different areas. We've looked at different ways of doing it. Push that number back up. Right. So first point, relevance and alignment, because you know what you're measuring. You can react properly. It's not with respect to accountants. It's not the boring after-the-fact numbers. It's proactive decision-making proactive relevance and alignment with where you want to get to. So that's the first point. The second point, absolutely critical about KPIs and metrics, is regular review. These are not things that you set up at the beginning of the year and then you look at it at the end of the year. Oh, did I make profit? Didn't I make profit? That's the type of thing an accountant might do. And sorry, again, with respect to accountants, they absolutely essential. Don't get me wrong. But these are things that you need to review regularly. In my view, at least, at least weekly. You might want to start off a little bit less. You might want to look at them monthly. Get them to weekly, though, and ideally get some of your numbers down to daily. Why do I say that? Because the decisions you take today affect you tomorrow. If you're running a cafe, for example, you need to know whether your cabinet's making money, what time of day it's making money, and you can measure those things. You can measure them ongoing. And knowing that allows you to then adjust. There's a cafe down the road here that I haven't been working with, but I know of them. I've been trying to help them out a little bit. They don't know when they make profit during the day. They don't know what profit. They don't even know what their break-even number is. That's a problem because they haven't got any KPIs, they haven't got any measurements. So they started off opening up at 6.30 in the morning, running through until 5 at night. They were losing money. They've now scaled that back. And together, eventually, they'll get the numbers right and they'll hopefully understand that they make most of their money at a particular time of day. They can measure that, they can report on it, they can make good decisions. So again, regular review, my recommendation is at least weekly. The third area that I want to talk about though is data, what I call data visualization. Right? Simple way of putting that is, a dashboard. Have a simple dashboard that measures your KPIs. The five ways that I mentioned, uh, one that I particularly like, not in that, but an extra one, is what I call the gross profit dollars per person per hour or per period. Gross profit dollars per person per period, right? So whether it be per day, per week, per hour, whatever. That's a fantastic measure because it means you need to know your gross profit. You need to know how many staff you've got. You need to know when they're working. You need to know their utilization. That's quite a complicated little number there. But get that right and have it on a simple dashboard. Look at it. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. You know exactly where you are. If you're interested, actually, on that note, if you're interested in a very simple dashboard, let me know. DM me, say dashboard, or you know, drop me an email, drop me an SMS, and I'll send you the simple dashboard that I give to all of my clients. It's fantastic. You can have it. You can use it. If you need help, I'm happy to do it for you. So that's what I would, that's certainly the way I would go, you know, the, what I would do. If you do need help with this, if you want to have more control, you want to have more certainty, you want to have greater accountability in your business, you want to get ready for growth, this is definitely the way to do it. Start with the, the financials, the non-financials, but have good KPIs and good metrics. Have a brilliant week. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video, but also don't forget to hop across to my website, and if you need help, give me a shot. Have a brilliant one. Cheers. All the best. Bye-bye.